In today's episode, we go over some of the most gruesome crocodile and alligator attacks on humans ever recorded. From a man who was ripped apart by 40 crocodiles after falling into an enclosure, to an elderly woman snatched from the edge of a pond while walking her dog. These are some of the worst attacks you'll ever see. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. Welcome to Final Affliction. In almost every regard, alligators are the apex predator within their habitat. Being opportunistic feeders means they are not particularly picky and will eat anything from small mammals, other reptiles, pets, and in some cases even other alligators. In even rarer instances, these animals have been documented eating humans. When these attacks happen, they can be catastrophic to those who are exposed to the prehistoric power of these animals, and often they don't survive to tell the tale. This is why most people are advised to keep their distance from the edge of swamps or lakes to ensure their safety. But some people believe that they don't have to listen to the advice given to keep them protected, and they have to face the consequences of their decision alone. On July 2, 2015, Tommy Woodward and his friends were drinking heavily together. Tommy was 28 years old and lived very close to his twin brother, having only recently stopped living together. They had an incredibly close relationship, as you would imagine for a pair of twins. That night, Tommy was drinking at his regular bar called Adam's Bayou, which was right next to Burkhart's Marina. A local construction worker was telling the group of a huge alligator that he'd seen in the marina recently. He had already told the owner that they had placed a sign to dissuade people from swimming in the water until they were able to capture the animal. So far, the sign had worked, and they'd had no issues so far. They were only mildly concerned as alligators were regular visitors in the area anyway. While they were used to their presence, the alligators were also used to the presence of humans and so did not exhibit any fear towards them. They are stealthy hunters, and if given the chance, they could easily pull someone into the water to become their next meal. The worry was that someone would jump in the water, unknowingly jumping right next to the hidden reptile, and be taken. As a result, it was understood by the members of the bar to avoid the water until they could catch the large alligator. This seems like common sense, but when you have a lot of men who have been drinking for hours on end, it may not be as straightforward as they may have hoped. That night, a little after midnight and after several hours of drinking, Tommy and his friends headed down to the marina's edge. They observed the no-swimming sign and decided to ignore it and investigate for themselves. As they watched the water, they suddenly saw a huge alligator raise its head from the water, seemingly observing them from a few meters away. It had a scarred head, suggesting that it had been in many fights and won in the past, carrying the battle scars with him as a reminder of his ferocity. Tommy's friend Victoria noticed the animal eyeing them and began to scream, knowing that they would not stand a chance if they were to jump in the water with such a mighty animal. She warned Tommy not to jump in the water, knowing now that it was a bad idea that they had even come this close to the water's edge. Tommy didn't share this thought. He was incredibly intoxicated by this time of the night, and instead of heeding his friend's advice, he began to shout at the alligator instead. His friends told him to stop, that he was putting himself at risk, but he continued shouting, F that gator. The animal was becoming more antagonized as he continued to shout at it before he took it one step further. Laughing, he ran forward and jumped into the water right in front of the alligator. His friends shouted out to him, begging him to come back to shore, but he was too drunk to listen. He began swimming further out, aiming for a small island on the other side of the bayou, and continued to ignore his friends as they told him to come back in from the water. Suddenly, and without a sound, Tommy disappeared under the water. Unsure of what was happening, the friends stared at the water while holding their breath in fear, waiting for him to resurface. He burst back into sight and began shouting to Victoria to stay out of the water. He noticed that she was already planning to come and save him, and he shouted again that the alligator had him and she couldn't get in the water to save him under any circumstance. 
Instead, Victoria began to run back to the bar. As Tommy was dragged back under the water, she knew that she needed to get help as the alligator would not show her friend any mercy. She ran into the bartender, Michelle Wright, and explained what was happening just a few meters from the bar. Michelle was horrified and confused as to why Tommy would decide to do such a thing. All patrons had been warned several times not to jump into the water. She quickly phoned 911 and informed them that there had been an animal attack. Although she couldn't confirm the state of the victim at the time, the air was tense. Everyone knew that this situation was unlikely to have a happy ending. Meanwhile, Tommy was fighting for his life. He knew his friend would try and get some help, but at the moment he was alone in the water with an alligator, a less than ideal situation. His lack of sobriety was also causing him great issue as he was becoming very disoriented and finding it difficult to stay above the surface. The alligator had initially grabbed onto his leg and pulled him down, trying to drown him with a death roll. Tommy had been able to kick the animal in the nose with his free foot and break free, but now he was injured and bleeding out into the water, leaving a trail for the predator to follow. He was glad that he stopped Victoria from following him and making the same mistake, but now he was living on borrowed time. He tried swimming back to the marina, using his uninjured foot to propel himself while he prayed that nothing else would grab him. The water was very cold, and as he lost more blood, he felt himself becoming more and more lethargic. As he was dragging himself through the water, he heard the water moving slightly behind him. As it was very late, it was quiet enough to hear a pin drop, so a massive alligator making its way towards someone could definitely be noticed. Tommy realized that he was still being pursued and began to panic, thrashing more and more as he tried to escape the approaching reptile. Unfortunately for him, alligators can swim at 32 kilometers per hour, so he was quickly caught. He screamed out as the animal grabbed onto his arm and pulled him downwards, rolling with him underwater to further disorient him. Even in his drunkenness, the pain was overwhelming for Tommy as he felt the gator's teeth sink further into his legs and the carbon monoxide in his lungs building up. Finally, as he felt himself unable to hold his breath any longer, he knew that he was doomed, realized he should have never mocked the alligator in the lake. Then, as his lungs used up the last bit of oxygen in his lungs, he gasped for air as the murky water rushed into his lungs. He instantly fell unconscious and surrendered to the alligator. After phoning 911, Michelle and Victoria ran back to the water's edge and tried to spot Tommy in the water once again. Sadly, by the time they arrived back at the marina, he was already floating face down on the surface. He was clearly dead dark red blood was pooling around his body. His friends decided that they would soon need to recover the body and give it back to his family. Before they could even come up with a plan, the alligator dragged his body under the water again, taking it further away from the marina as it settled down to eat its prey. After some time, the 911 officers arrived on the scene and the search for Tommy's body began. They scoured the marina for two hours until they were finally able to find his dismembered corpse across the lake. His left arm was completely missing, and his body was covered in bite and claw marks. It was determined that the animal had grabbed his elbow and dragged him into the depths to drown him, something that it was successful in achieving. Locals arranged a hunt to try and locate the man-eater, but they were unsuccessful, suspecting that it had simply swam back out of the marina and would not be seen again. Kent Roberts, a local in the area and friend of Tommy's, thought differently. He had seen the animal previously and knew that it would be back. He set up several traps and lines around the area, hoping to snare the creature and make it pay for the death of his friend. Not long after, the alligator was captured in one of his traps, and so Kent fired seven rounds straight in the alligator's head. Although the animal was stopped, his story has been used as a fatal tale, knowing that the entire situation was avoidable if Tommy had just avoided the water as he had been told. Although it was ultimately the reptile that killed Tommy Woodward, it was drunkenness and pigheadedness that really claimed a life that night. Had Tommy been in the right state of mind, he may have avoided his terrifying final affliction. 
When we think of farming, we typically think of fields of wheat or a herd of cows. But in some parts of the world, crocodiles are farmed. They are produced not only for their meat, but for their skins and eggs as well. It is a big business in places like Cambodia, where it provides a living for many families. But unlike farming cows and sheep, this farming is a deadly game. When your livestock consider you as their prey, you know you need to be tough to survive. One wrong move, and it could be game over. Luan Nam was a veteran in the business of crocodile farming. He was 72 years old and farmed more than 40 crocodiles on his land. His farm was one of more than 900 across Cambodia, just outside Siam Reap, Cambodia's second largest city. 60% of the kingdom's crocodile farms are situated in this region. The climate is ideal for crocodile production, but not much can be said of the conditions in which they are kept. In Cambodia, Siamese crocodiles and saltwater crocodiles are the most common species to be farmed. Hong Kong, China, and Taiwan are the biggest importers of crocodile products in the world. They consume the meat and use different body parts in traditional medicine and pharmaceuticals. More than a million skins are exported by crocodile farmers every year, and these are highly prized in the fashion industry. A crocodile farmer can expect a crocodile's value to be double what was paid to grow and harvest it, but prices vary across the world, and the industry in Cambodia has seen a steady decline in the value of its commercial crocodiles. In a bid to keep production costs down and cleaning to a minimum, in Cambodia, crocodiles are confined to concrete enclosures and fed dead fish, corn flour soaked in blood, and chunks of meat. It is a miserable existence for these prehistoric reptiles. Luan's family knew just how dangerous the business was. Luan had many close calls before. Keeping the highly intelligent animals in unnatural environments could drive them mad with aggression. His farm was a concrete pit. In the center, there was a rectangular freshwater pool in which the crocodiles could swim and cool off. It was green and murky. The surrounds were all made of cold, hard concrete. There was no environmental enrichment for the giant reptiles. It was a bleak environment. Steel steps led down to the ground from walkways above. Wooden planks balanced across raised concrete pillars helped Luan move around without entering the enclosure. But it was a dangerous and precarious setup. One slip, and he would plummet into the concrete pit and the eagerly waiting crocodiles below. Fish that cost 50 cents per kilo were tossed from these walkways. Younger crocodiles were fed daily, but the adults usually only once a week. Although they were fed in this way, their killer instincts were still there. Fights often broke out, the overcrowded enclosure erupting into a pit of loud hisses, thrashing water, and fearsome biting matches. Luan had erected metal cages in which the female crocodiles could lay their eggs. These were a precious commodity. He sold them to other farms or on the Chinese market. But accessing the eggs could often prove challenging. The females were protective of their clutch. They would hiss at Luan if he came too close. His only form of defense was a stick that he held out in front of him. It was the only barrier between him and his deadly livestock. A crocodile's jaws can exert a force of more than 3,500 PSI. They would snap the stick in half like a matchstick, but better the stick than his leg. In May 2023, Luan arrived at his farm as usual. His family had begged him for years to give up the business. They knew how dangerous it was for him, and at 72 years old, he certainly wasn't getting any younger. The prices for crocodiles and their products were steadily declining as direct markets were fluctuating and there was less demand from neighboring countries. But changing careers at that age would be difficult for Luan. He knew his business inside out, and it just about provided for his family. He took pride in being the president of the local Crocodile Farmers Association. There was no way he was giving up now. Adult females used to reach between $500 and $600, but in recent years had dropped to $150. The profitability of crocodile farming in Cambodia was dropping, but it was all Luan had ever known. A female crocodile was inside one of the metal nesting cages that morning. She was protecting her clutch when Luan arrived on the scene. 
The crocodiles typically laid between 20 and 60 eggs between February and May, and the hatchlings would emerge between April and July. In 2019, these babies would fetch a price of $7 to $10 per head, but by 2020, this price had dropped to just $2.50. Cambodia's crocodile farmers were barely breaking even. Each and every crocodile produced on the farm was valuable, and Luan needed to make sure that all the eggs made it to hatching. Luan climbed down the metal steps and into the enclosure, keeping his eyes on the inhabitants closely. The egg-laying cage was on a raised platform, set back from the rest of the crocodiles. As he approached the female, she hissed loudly, her mouth open, displaying all 70 of her lethal, sharp teeth. Luan hit the cage with his stick. The crocodile thrashed her tail from side to side. She was angry. Luan prodded her, and she began to move out of the cage. As she neared the edge of it, she suddenly lunged at Luan's stick. She grabbed it in her jaws and clamped down. Instinctively, Luan pulled the stick backwards, but in doing so, he lost his footing and fell. He landed on the ground of the crocodile enclosure with a heavy thud. The enormous reptiles wheeled around. All 40 of them had their eyes locked onto the small farmer. They spotted him lying helplessly on the ground, and before he had a chance to get to his feet, they ran over to him. Luan knew that he was in serious trouble. He had never been in that situation before, and he knew what was coming. In an instant, some crawled out of the water, dragging themselves onto dry land. Others, basking on the side of the pool, leapt to their feet. As they ran towards him, their tails swayed from side to side, and their short legs moved quickly underneath their enormous, heavy bodies. Their mouths were closed in their characteristic toothy grin, but as they came within striking distance, they opened, gaping wide. To them, this was fresh meat at feeding time. Before he could react, one quickly lunged forward and grabbed Luan's leg. It shook its head, shaking the man violently from side to side. He cried out and tried to reach down and release himself from the vice-like grip. But as he did so, another launched an attack, this time biting down on his arm. It violently ripped his arm from his body and swallowed it, whole, in front of him. Blood poured onto the concrete. Luan was desperate. Nobody was around to hear his cries. Nobody knew the danger he was in. Luan continued to fight back. He was losing blood. He could feel the raw power from the crocodiles as they lunged at him and bit down. Another crocodile joined the feeding frenzy and pulled Luan so hard that he felt his hip give way. He was dragged across the concrete, scraping his back as he was pulled towards the stagnant green water. Then, with an almighty splash, he was dragged in. The forty crocodiles slid into the pool after him, each lunging at the body, pulling and tugging. One performed a death roll. Luan, now barely conscious, held his breath as he was washing machined over and over under the water. He could feel the pressure building in his leg. He could feel the intense searing pain as more and more crocodiles attacked him, taking bites out of him. But he couldn't fight any longer. He couldn't hold them off. It was a losing battle. In less than a few minutes, Luan had lost his fight. His body lay limp in the water. Swirls beneath the surface and splashes around his limbs continued. The green water turned red as the crocodiles feasted, tugging at the corpse. Another crocodile pulled the man's body out onto dry land, and that is where Luan was found when workers arrived at the farm. He was surrounded by a pool of his own blood. His arm was missing, and bite marks covered his body from head to toe. Emergency services were called, but there was nothing they could do for the farmer. He had succumbed to his injuries within minutes of the feeding frenzy. His lifeless body was surrounded by the hungry reptiles, and every time officials tried to get close to him to retrieve his body, the crocodiles hissed and snapped. One crocodile lay just meters away, a prized possession in its jaw. It was Luan's black sandal held tightly between its teeth, a trophy of sorts and a chilling reminder of the terror that must have unfolded earlier that day. When you see the basic setup of some of the world's crocodile farms, it is surprising that there aren't more incidents like this. However, just four years earlier, a two-year-old girl wandered into her family's crocodile farm and was eaten alive in the very same village as Luan Nam's farm. 
Most of the rural farms have a distinct lack of safety measures in place and very few barriers to stop this kind of thing from happening. It took time and courage before Luan could be pulled from the enclosure by officials. Securing his body meant that now his family were now able to bury him and mourn their loss. They had begged him to sell the farm years ago, and now his business had cost him his life. After his death, Luan's family sold the farm and all the crocodiles in it, something Luan should have done years before, but tragically never did. The very thing that provided him a living all these years had ended up being the cause of his terrifying final affliction. Wild animals are always fascinating. From rare species of birds to the sight of a truly magnificent beast such as a lion, there is simply something that captures our attention with these creatures and has us wanting to know more about them. However, there are some animals that fascinate us more than others. And what could be more intriguing than a creature which has changed very little since prehistoric times? With their razor-sharp teeth and almost prehistoric-like eyes, alligators truly are one of the world's most wondrous creatures. But much like their ancestors before them, they are also incredibly dangerous, something Cynthia Covert failed to realize. 58-year-old Cynthia Covert lived in Johns Island in South Carolina in the United States of America. She was a nail artist and had worked in her profession for many years. The woman loved to spend her days gossiping with her clients over the latest celebrity news or offering them advice for any problems that they might have been facing. Overall, it seemed like Cynthia was living a fairly normal life with a fairly normal routine which she found comfort in. However, in 2020, something happened worldwide which no one was prepared for. A virus spread through the world, causing chaos in its wake, which led to people all over the world finding themselves suddenly uprooted from their normal daily routine and thrust into unknown circumstances, which left them feeling unsure of what to do next. Sadly, Cynthia was one of these people who suddenly found herself unemployed. Because a health crisis was declared, her salon was forced to shut its doors, and Cynthia was left with no source of income and with no clue when her salon would be able to open up again. Deciding that she wasn't going to simply sit around and wait for all of her savings to run out, Cynthia began to see some of her clients in their own homes. She thought that it would be a good way to earn a little bit of money whilst maintaining a form of social distancing. One of her clients was a woman named Barbara Howell, who lived on Kiawa Island. The sea islands of which Kiawa and John's Islands are a part of are a chain of tidal and barrier islands on the Atlantic Ocean coast off of the southeastern United States. Being a series of various sized islands and being located near to the ocean, this means that there are various different animals which inhabit the waterways between each piece of land. One of these animals is the American alligator. This animal is the only crocodilian native to South Carolina. They can live up to 60 years and can grow over 13 feet in length. It was once listed as a federally endangered species due to hunting and encroachment onto their habitat. However, populations have rebounded and the alligator's status has been upgraded from endangered to threatened. In fact, Populations of alligators in South Carolina have done so well in terms of increasing their numbers that officials decided to instigate a hunting season back in 2008 to try and keep the population under control. On the day that Cynthia went to Barbara's house to do her nails for her, there was one of these alligators resting in the pond in the backyard of the home. Thinking nothing of it at first, Cynthia and her clients settled down on the porch in the backyard where the nail artist began to do her job and shape Barbara's nails the way that she wanted them. However, from the very moment that Cynthia walked through the front door, Barbara felt as if there was something off with the woman's behavior. The 58-year-old woman seemed to be very talkative that particular day, and she was acting a bit strange as well. Barbara then went on to clarify that usually Cynthia would act very professionally whilst she was at the salon. But when she turned up to her home that day, the woman was acting very relaxed and excited as she told Barbara all about her boyfriend and how he was traveling from Tennessee to visit her. Whilst doing Barbara's nails, Cynthia also had a glass of wine, a 
although Barbara couldn't be sure if the woman had potentially consumed a stronger substance before turning up at her home, as she simply thought that Cynthia's behavior was too out of the ordinary for her to be completely sober. However, seeing as the nail artist hadn't done anything besides talk a bit more than usual, Barbara decided to carry on with her appointment, under the impression that Cynthia would simply go back home once she was done and hopefully sleep off whatever was affecting her. However, little did Barbara know what would actually happen only moments later. After finishing off her client's nails, Cynthia once again looked over to the pond, only to notice that the alligator was still there. She became fascinated with the creature and decided that she wanted to get a closer look at it. So, whilst Barbara cleaned up the porch from the remnants of her nail appointment, Cynthia began walking over to where the alligator was resting in the pond. The 58-year-old took out her phone and began taking photos of the animal, trying to get the best possible image that she could. With every picture that Cynthia took, she inched ever closer to the alligator and the edge of the pond. Upon noticing where her friend had disappeared off to and how close to the dangerous animal she had gotten, Barbara quickly called out to her to back away from the alligator as it had snatched a deer from the exact spot that she was standing only a few days previously. Scoffing, Cynthia apparently replied to Barbara, telling her that she wasn't a deer before the nail artist then tried to touch the deadly reptile. In the next few moments, everything seemed to happen in a blur. Having seen what Cynthia was about to do, Barbara's husband had charged out of the house to try and grab the woman before it was too late. However, within seconds, the alligator had turned and snapped its jaws around Cynthia's left leg and had begun to drag her into the pond. Shocked at what was happening, Barbara had let out a horrified scream. However, oddly, Cynthia apparently didn't make a sound even as the alligator dragged her into the water and clamped down on her leg. Hearing the commotion, one of Barbara's neighbors ran over to the house to see what was going on. Upon witnessing the scene, the neighbor then grabbed a rope from his house, which he threw into the pond for Cynthia to grab a hold of. By this point, the woman was waist deep in the water, and as she held onto the rope, which her friends were using to try and pull her to safety, she apparently spoke in a calm manner. I guess I won't do this again. Sadly, try as they might, Barbara, her husband, and the neighbor simply weren't strong enough to break the alligator's hold on Cynthia's leg. Then, once the reptile was far enough out into the pond, it began going into a death roll. This is a maneuver in which a crocodile or alligator rolls over with its prey in its jaws to bring its prey underwater and drown it. With nothing else that they could do, Barbara called the emergency services. Within a few minutes, police deputies and firefighters arrived at Barbara's home where they charged into the backyard in order to help in any way that they could. Initially, they saw no movement in the water from either the alligator or Cynthia. But after about 15 minutes, Cynthia's body resurfaced with the alligator still holding on to her leg. Thinking quickly, one of the deputies shot the alligator, forcing it to release Cynthia. She was then quickly pulled to shore where, thankfully, emergency service workers were able to see that her body was intact. However, she did have severe injuries to her left leg. By this time, paramedics had also arrived at the scene and quickly whisked Cynthia away to the hospital. Sadly, she was declared dead shortly after arriving at the hospital, with the initial cause of death being drowning. This sadly marked the third alligator-related death to have happened in South Carolina within four years. And whilst it is not known exactly why Cynthia was acting so strange that day and why she decided to approach a known deadly animal, her passing was still a tragedy which greatly upset those who knew and loved her. It's important to remember that it is better to appreciate nature from a safe distance as a wild animal could attack without notice, which could result in severe injury or, in the worst case scenario, meeting your terrifying final affliction. Florida is famous around the world for their alligators. It is theorized that they live in almost all freshwater bodies in the state. In fact, it is believed that there are roughly 1.25 million of the animals living in Florida. Their populations are so big that interactions between humans and alligators are fairly common. Since 1948, there have been over 450 reported attacks, and this number is set to rise, especially when people take their small pets to the alligator's home. 
We have all heard the inspiring stories of animals saving humans, from whales that protect swimmers from sharks, or dogs protecting their owners from dangerous animals. What most people fail to realize is that humans will usually do the same for their pets, even to their own peril. Many pet owners would do anything for their animals, and there are stories across the world of people going above and beyond for their beloved furry friends. Humans are surprisingly ready to risk their lives for their pets, and some have even made the ultimate sacrifice in the hopes of saving their tiny family members. The Floridian retirement complex known as Spanish Lakes hit the headlines in 2023 for all the wrong reasons. These retirement homes prided themselves on keeping their residents happy and active with a wide range of activities for them to pick from, including swimming and golf. In addition, they boast 24 lakes on their property for the residents to sail on or simply walk around during their daily activities. While these lakes were created to help the mental and physical health of the people living there, they never thought that something could be living in them something that was waiting to snack on some retirees. In February 2023, Gloria Serge had been living at Spanish Lakes for some time. She knew the area very well and had a few friends within the small community in Florida where they would all keep an eye on each other. Despite the people that she knew, her favorite companion was undoubtedly her small dog named Trooper. He had been living with her since she moved into the complex and she enjoyed being able to take him for walks in such a beautifully scenic place, something that she was rarely able to do when she lived alone. After her husband died, she decided that it would be best for her to move in around other people rather than live in the isolation that widowhood tends to accompany. She was grateful to have such a well-behaved dog to keep her company during her days and was excited to take him out on that fateful day. Although they say that a breath of fresh air is good for you, Gloria sadly didn't know what awaited her as she set out for her daily dog walk. That afternoon, Gloria left her apartment as usual with Trooper running ahead of her on the leash. She planned to walk around the lakes nearest her home as she decided that they would be the most beautiful and it would be easy for her to return home if she started to feel tired. She set off, determined to make it around the first lake taking in her surroundings and feeling particularly happy to be living amongst such stunning natural scenery. She waved to some of her neighbors as she got closer to the water's edge, looking across to the other side and readying herself for the long walk ahead. In her increasingly old age, she had been finding it more and more difficult to complete an entire lap of the lake, but Trooper's enthusiasm and love of being outdoors fueled her to try harder each day. As she slowly made her way around the lake, she had no idea that she was being watched from a distance. 100 feet away from her, on the other side of the water, a 10-foot alligator had spotted the pair walking close to the edge and decided that one of them would make an easy target. It clambered into the murky water and began to stalk Gloria and Trooper, who continued with their walk, oblivious to what was watching them. It stealthily approached them but hung back just enough to stay out of sight, watching the pensioner and her dog as they continued their leisurely afternoon. It waited for its best moment and then leapt from the water, trying to grab onto Trooper and drag him into the water. But Gloria wouldn't allow it. She now had to decide who would survive this attack, her dog or herself. As Gloria saw the huge beast run at her from the water, she knew what she had to do. Her tiny dog was oblivious to the attack as she swung him out of the way of the alligator's jaws and threw him away from danger, but they weren't safe yet. Seeing that its initial target had been pulled away from its grasp, the reptile turned on Gloria instead, seizing her by the leg and dragging her to the ground. She screamed out for help as she was quickly dragged into the water, waving her arms desperately to catch the attention of any of her nearby neighbors. The huge alligator had a firm grip on her leg and gave no hint of letting go while she was still alive. She knew she only had a limited amount of time before it would be too late. Trooper was barking viciously on the grass as he watched his owner slip under the water, but there was nothing that such a small dog could do to help. Ultimately, Gloria had saved her dog's life by sacrificing her own. One of her neighbors, 76-year-old Carol Thomas, 
overheard the commotion and saw Gloria being pulled into the water by an alligator nearly twice her size. Panicking, the retiree quickly called the police. Carol ran outside while holding the phone and grabbed a pole from her garden as she tried to help. When she got there, she felt as though her heart had stopped as the woman in the water was no longer moving, only floating on the surface as she was being tugged and pulled by the alligator. Carol began to maneuver the pole towards Gloria, hoping against hope that she could grab it and then be pulled to safety, but sadly it was already too late. Gloria was dead, and the alligator quickly snatched away her body, leaving Carol to watch as the body was pulled under the murky water. When the authorities arrived, there was a crowd of people around the lake as other people living in the complex came to learn of the terrible event that had happened on their doorsteps. They were terrified. They walked the same path every day and were thinking about how it could have been any one of them. They had no idea there was even an alligator in their lake and were shocked that no one had ever noticed such a large beast sharing the same area as them. Shortly after her death, Gloria's body was recovered from the water, her injuries extensive across her entire body as the alligator attempted to begin to eat her before she was brought out of the water. There was only one thing left to do, capture the alligator. Wildlife experts were sent to find the animal and bring it from the lake so that they could decide what to do with it. After a long search, they found it hiding at the bottom of the lake, its belly full. After it was captured, the experts were able to measure the massive animal at 10 feet long. After measuring the gator, they took it away to be killed as it was decided that an animal that size could not continue living in the lake certainly not after it had begun to attack the residents of the retirement complex. The owners of the complex then began an extermination effort to make sure that their residents were safe. No one would want to leave their family members in their care if they knew there was a risk of them suffering the same fate as Gloria. They were able to clear as many of the lakes as possible and relocated all of the other reptiles that they found. Unfortunately for Gloria, she was the third alligator victim in Florida in the last six months, leading authorities to warn locals to stay away from large bodies of water, especially when walking with their pets. Gloria proved to everyone what people would do to save their animals. Luckily for Trooper, he survived the whole ordeal and was eventually sent to live with Gloria's family, his life saved from the jaws of an alligator by a woman who would protect him up until her very last breath, up until her terrifying final affliction. The crocodiles of Indonesia are a different kind of breed from the typical ones sun basking in zoos. They are known for their unparalleled cunningness, a trait that has made them formidable predators and survivors for millions of years. On an annual basis, these ancient reptiles are responsible for the deaths of more than 200 souls in Indonesia alone. They are masterful survivors who use their cunningness to outwit their prey and competitors. They attack ferociously, leaving a trail of carnage in their wake. 44-year-old DC Tuo was a wildlife research scientist working in the CV Yoshiki Laboratory in Indonesia. The Pearl Farm, where the laboratory was located, had illegally kept a group of crocodiles, which usually basked by the swamps. Among the crocodiles was one named Mary. Mary was 17 feet in length and weighed a staggering 1,300 pounds thanks to his protein-filled diet of tuna, chicken, and beef. Being an animal lover, DC found it refreshing to feed Mary, who never fed on frozen foods or carcasses that were more than a day old. Everything had to be fresh. On the 10th of January, 2019, DC clocked in and was the first employee to arrive at the lab. It was a warm Friday morning, and the rising sun's rays reflected on the green pools in the Pearl Farm. DC took fresh chunks of meat and headed to her favorite crocodile, Mary for the routine feeding. 
The crocodile saw her approaching and with a swift flick of its powerful tail propelled itself out of the water. Its body tensed with anticipation, with its beady eyes locked onto the bucket of meat. DC approached the enclosure with slow and cautious movements, wholly aware of the danger lurking beyond the concrete wall. She stood by the enclosure and raised one lump above the eight-foot-tall wall. The crocodile stood on its hind legs and grabbed the meat mid-air faster than the eye could follow, before swallowing it whole. Its sleek, scaly form glistened in the morning sun as it gracefully landed back on the floor. DC could see the rippling muscles beneath its skin working in choreographed harmony to execute the impressive leap. Her jaw dropped in awe as she watched Mary's acrobatic display. She continued to feed the reptile, marveling at its sheer power and grace. It was as if it was dancing with her, a graceful but deadly partner in their gory routine. She felt a sense of respect and admiration for Mary. Here she was witnessing an ancient reptile showcasing the raw power and beauty of nature, a true force to reckon with. As she raised the last piece of meat over the wall, the crocodile choreographically stood on its rear and leaped a little higher than the previous times, clamping its jaws around both the meat and DC's left hand. DC had been so engrossed in admiring the creature that she forgot to keep her hand high enough, far from the crocodile's reach. She shrieked in pain as Mary's finger-long teeth punctured her skin and sliced her flesh. It then came thudding down, pulling DC over the wall and into the enclosure. DC heard her bones crushing on the impact of the fall. Mary then did the crocodile's typical death roll with DC's left arm still in his mouth. DC's body convulsed as the crocodile continued to tear her, shaking her like a chew toy. Her screams echoed through the air, a desperate plea for help that went unanswered. Blood spattered across the ground, and her screams began to grow fainter as her strength began to wane. Mary's powerful muscles worked in unison. He shook his head from side to side, rolled and twisted, ripping the flesh and bone from DC's body. The sounds of bones crunching and flesh tearing filled the air as DC screamed in agony. On the floor, she rolled over and glanced towards Mary and their eyes met. She was staring right at her with cold, unblinking eyes. Her arm was long gone down the guts of the creature. Crocodiles are unable to chew their food and therefore swallow it whole. They have the most acidic digestive system of any animal, capable of digesting bones, horns, and hooves. They are also known to swallow small stones known as gastroliths, which help grind their prey. DC's heart pounded in her chest as she desperately searched for a way out of the death ring. She was now bleeding profusely and in agonizing pain. As she scrambled to her feet, she could feel the hot breath of the crocodile on her heels and the sound of its massive body slithering across the concrete floor echoing in her ears. She scanned the walls, hoping to find a crack or handhold to grip onto, but they were perfectly smooth and offered no escape. The crocodile was gaining on her, its jaws snapping just inches from her feet. With a surge of adrenaline, she launched herself towards the walls and began scaling like a human spider with her remaining arm. Her fingers searched frantically for a grip, but the smooth surface offered none. She then lost her footing and slipped, falling straight into the murky water. She had now jumped from the frying pan to the fire, as the waters were Mary's ideal hunting grounds. She had nowhere to run and was now at the mercy of Mary. Mary slipped into the water and began swimming towards her. DC frantically pumped her arm and legs to propel her towards the other side, but with a missing arm, she was too slow to outrun the vicious reptile. Within seconds, the crocodile had caught up with her and lunged itself with its jaws open, then clamped onto DC's torso. DC let out a screeching scream while yelling for help, but the crocodile was efficient and merciless. 
It tore her torso open, and her intestines and other internal organs were exposed, staining the water red. DC flailed her arm, beating the surface of the water as she struggled to stay afloat. However, her remaining arm ended up in the tight grip of the crocodile's teeth. It then dragged her into the depths, where her lungs burned with the need for air. If a crocodile is unable to snap the neck of its prey, it drags it underwater and holds it to drown. And this was the case with DC. She could feel her life fading away. The water churned with blood as the beast continued to pull her under. DC knew that her fate had been sealed and closed her eyes, bracing for death. DC was always the first to report to work, and if not around, she would inform her colleagues of her absence. So as time went by, the other workers became a little concerned about the whereabouts of their laboratory leader, who was known to be punctual. They hoped that a minor, unavoidable circumstance had held her, and that she would report later in the day. However, in the mid-morning hours, around 9 a.m., terror spread on the farm when someone spotted a strange shape in Mary's enclosure. A body was lazily drifting on the surface of the water, facing down. The strange shape then started gliding on the surface of the water towards the dry concrete floor. It was then that the horrified staff saw the crocodile emerge with DC's savaged body between its jaws. Her left hand was nothing but a mangled stump and her torso badly mutilated. The staff's minds struggled to comprehend the sheer brutality of the attack. They were afraid of venturing into the predator's enclosure and immediately notified authorities at the Tambariri police station. A rescue team consisting of the police and officers from North Sulawesi Natural Resources Conservation Agency immediately jumped into action to retrieve DC's body. However, the relentless crocodile wasn't ready to let go of its prized catch. As they approached Mary, he thrashed his powerful tail back and forth in a wild display of strength and fury. His hiss cut through the air like a jagged blade leaving the rescuers in fear. His eyes blazed with a fierce intensity and his hiss was a clear message that he was ready to protect his kill. The handlers retreated and grabbed their sedation gun. They had seen enough of Mary's aggression. The sedated crocodile was then strapped on a flatbed truck and ferried away to a wildlife rescue facility where medical tests were conducted that confirmed it had indeed consumed DC. Staff at the CV Yoshiki Laboratory described DC as a quiet lady who loved animals. They were deeply devastated by the death of the head of the lab. However, they noted with concern how Mary had shown prior signs of aggression, having previously attacked and killed another crocodile that had ventured into his pool. The Sulawesi Natural Resources Conservation Agency officials blamed the Japanese owner of the facility who was illegally keeping these crocodiles as pets. He was charged and later received a 10-year prison sentence for being the primary cause of DC-20's horrifying final affliction.